your bread shall be sure. In the former Soviet Union, communism flourished for more than 70 years. During this time when there was very little religious freedom, God's people kept the light of the gospel burning, though many of them suffered severe persecution for it. Many faithful Christians in the Soviet Union were willing to stand up for the gospel of Jesus and Pastor Sidney was just such a man. One dark night, the KGB secret police came knocking on Sidney's door because he had refused to reveal the location of his church to the communist authorities. He knew that the charges were serious and he might never return home again, but he still refused to give them the information. His wife was frantic, but he tried to comfort her. Remember, my dear, all Christians must be willing to endure hardship before Jesus. If we do not see each other again on earth, we will certainly meet in heaven. Pastor Sergei was taken to headquarters, cruelly beaten and then brought before the director of KGB operations. After repeated Interrogations, Inter igno interrogations. He still refused to talk, so they finally sentenced him to prison far, far away. Sugi had no Bible to read, but he didn't allow himself to become discouraged. He kept his faith strong by reciting texts of scripture that he had been memorizing for years. There was too much at stake here, and he gratefully anticipated God's call to be a witness for a witness in the prison where he knew he would be taken. For two days, Sergei rode a train and although under guard, he conducted Bible studies with other travelers on the train. As on the, train. the light of hope in the eyes of the travelers was truly rewarding and, and even the guards Listen as she shared the gospel story. When Pastor Sergei finally arrived at the prison, he was turned over to the warden. As the warden heard the charges behind being brought against Sergei, he taunted him for his belief in God. That Then he took the pastor to a maximum security cell and locked him in it. There will be no food for you until you learn to cooperate with the government, he announced. Sergei bravely accepted the sentence, but assured the warden that God would care for his every need. The warden laughed at the, at the, at the idea that God could provide food for Sergei in the, his prison cell. If God exists, why did he allow you to be locked up in the first place? He scoffed. The prison cell was quite small, containing only a bed and a chair. There was a small window in the cell door and a large win and a larger window high in the wall above his bed. Sergei felt discouraged and alone in his surroundings, but he claimed God's promises. Remember, as he fell asleep in the cold. Dark cell, he, Sergei kept reminding himself that, that God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 19. Trusting in that promise, he was satisfied. What will God do for me next? He wondered. The next morning, Sergei awoke to a scratching sound at the window, and when he stood up on his bed, he found a slice of Russian black bread on his window sill. He could hardly believe it. Who had brought the bread? A prison guard? He wanted to eat the bread, but decided to save it and show it to the warden to prove that God had provided for him. When evening came, another slice of bread appeared on the window sill, and, next, and the next morning, the same thing happened again. Sergei was very hungry but decided not to eat any of it. If one slice of bread was living proof of God's watch, Kevin, more slices of bread would be even better. One by one, he hid them all under his mattress. By now, Sergei was thinking of all the stories in the Bible where God's people had been miraculously fed. 
Could it be ravens that were feeding him, as in the story of Elijah? Or was it an angel? Or was it an angel? On the morning of the fifth day, the warden came to visit Sergei and taunted him once again. Are you ready now to renounce your belief and in God and give up your foolish ways? He demanded. Sergei smiled briefly and told the warden that God had indeed provided him with food. Then he lifted the mattress and showed the warden six whole slices of Russian bread. The warden was furious. Someone has been feeding you, he stormed. I will punish that culprit when I find out who it is. However, just at that moment, they heard a scratching sound at the window. To their surprise, on the window ledge was a cat with a slice of bread in its mouth. The warden was dumbfounded that God would use an animal to provide food for Sergei. But the most amazing thing of all was that the cat belonged to the warden's daughter and the bread in its mouth was fresh from the warden's own kitchen table. What a testimony! To Sergei's faith under trial and persecution, God has done amazing things like this for his people and down through the ages. And if you need his help, he can do them for you too. Think about it. Think about it. Why would someone keep believing in something even though they could be punished for it? They can, they will be. They can be making it a habit, that's one reason, or they love it so much they, that they cannot change it, their ways. That's the second reason. Do you think the prison warden changed his heart after seeing what happened to Pastor Sergei? Yes, I'm sure. Why? Because he can't believe it's himself, and if he realizes it's himself, what will he do? Will he punish himself, or will he let the let Pastor Sergei go and feed him? With what? With food. Food from the Bible.